Hello and welcome to the second part of the Ultimate Hot Hatch and we start with the VW Rabbit. Now this wasn't quite the first Hot Hatch, I guess some would claim that the Mini maybe might have been. Uh, I don't really know if that's really a proper Hot Hatch, I mean it is a slightly well, the Mini Cooper S, slightly faster version but it wasn't particularly fast sort of in general. Yes it did win at Monte Carlo Rally but that was more to do with its tiny size than anything else. This was probably the first sort of mass produced, mass popular uh, hot hatch and we've talked about this car before uh, no it is not particularly fast uh, it was, it, it, I've lost the statistics I have like a page full of them uh, 9.17 seconds to 60 so yeah, still not too bad uh, I have to say top speed is 115 eventually will take a while to get there uh, I think it's 47 seconds to 100 so yeah it, it's not a particularly fast car I mean, it's only got 90 horsepower however it does only weigh 2100 pounds which means it's very light and it's it's a nice car to drive, it's just a fun car to drive, you can throw it into the corners and sort of just generally mess about with it. It's also very very cheap, only 5,000 credits. It's, yeah, it's, it's a nice car to drive, it's a fun car to drive. Uh, no, it's not going to break lap records, uh, <laughs> but you know, for a bit of a mess about if you have a group of these racing it's incredibly good fun because they are their very nice handling front wheel drive cars and because they're so light you can sort of throw them about and mess around with them and yeah it's it's a it's a slow car but it's a car that I think everybody enjoys driving because it handles really quite well. Now we move on next to a Renault 5 Turbo oh I don't this is a bit of a tricky one I don't know whether this really properly counts as a hot hatch uh, considering I would normally say that they are sort of fairly standard rogue -like models with just a bit more powerful engine in them. Uh, this one has sort of had a lot of radical changes. The engine has moved from the front to the middle and it's now rear wheel drive and there's also only two seats. Uh, you can just about see that it's a Renault 5, kind of, underneath the wide body kit. Uh, it's a little bit mental, it was designed to be a homologation thing for rallying uh, and whether it's a proper hot hatch I don't know, I guess there, there'll probably be some debate about that. However, as a hatchback, it is a very, very good car. It does 130 miles an hour in a straight line. Considering this was made in, I think, about 1980, that was pretty good. Uh, 0 to 60 times, 6.7 seconds. Again, it's fairly impressive for its age. It is quite expensive, 38,000 credits. And it is quite a lot for a car that's not overly fast. I mean, that's slightly more than the Alfa Giulietta. The Giulietta would be much faster around the track. But again, this is a good, fun car to drive. It's rear-wheel drive, which means you don't have any understeer. It is very short wheelbase, so it can be a little bit twitchy, but I still recommend giving it a go because it is a fantastic car to drive. Now we move on to one of my favourite cars of all time. You guys all know this. It is the Peugeot 205 T16. Again, this is a very similar story with the with the Renault 5, is whether it's a proper hot hatch or not, because again, there's been rather extensive changes from the normal 205. The engine's gone to the middle again, and this time it's four-wheel drive. Uh, again, you lose the back seat, so it's only a two-seater. So some practicality has kind of gone out the window. Uh, however, it is a, a very good car. It's got sort of 200 horsepower. No city time, 6.8 seconds. So, yeah, that's not much slower than a Scirocco R. Uh, top speed, 137 miles an hour. The only real downside to this car is the price. 120,000 credits. That is an awful lot of money. Uh, you can have an ACR Viper for less, Lamborghini Gallardo for less. In fact, you can have an Ultima GTR for the same amount of money. And the Ultima is very, very much faster than this. <laughs> I will be honest. However, as as a hatchback, this thing is incredibly good to drive. I've said it many times. And I will say it again. This is probably the best hand and four-wheel drive car, in my opinion. It really is very, very good to drive. No, it's not going to be as fast as some of the modern hatchbacks, like the Civic and the Shrocker. They'll probably still beat it around the track. However, this one here is definitely... It's a really fun car to drive if you forget the money. If you include the money, yeah, it's kind of maybe not quite so so worth it. But I do recommend if you have the DLC for this, go drive it because really it's a very good car. Uh, but yeah, money-wise, I couldn't name it as an ultimate hatchback because it's just so expensive. And also, it might not be even a proper one. We move on to the Lancia Delta now, and this one again has kind of the same issue uh, with with the 205 and the the Renault 5 as to whether you would call this a proper hot hatch. In fact, this one actually probably got more of an issue with this one than the other two. Is that the Lancia Delta was built for rallying? Uh, it was built to be a rally car. It's a very very successful rally car. I think it's the most successful rally car of all time. Uh, Citroen may have won more titles. Uh, actually, I don't think they have. Uh, I'm trying to remember now. I, I think Sebastian Lopez won loads of titles recently with Citroens, but I think he had three different cars. I think he had the Zara 
the C4 and then the DS3, if I remembered that right. I should have looked that fact up. Uh, but yeah, the Lancia Delta, I think, is the most successful singular rally car. Uh, however, that's what it was designed for. There isn't a sort of a normal Delta road car. It, the reason why there are road legal ones is because they had to make homologation ones to go rallying. So would you count this as a hot hatch? Mm, I'm not so sure. The same problem with the Super Impreza as well, actually, while I'm on that subject. Uh, it's not really a hot hatch. It is a hatchback, but it's not a, a hot hatch. In fact, the Ferrari FF is a hatchback, but you certainly wouldn't be calling that one uh, a hot hatch. So with this car, um, if you would call it a hot hatch, then this is another very, very good four-wheel drive one. It's got what has it got? 210 horsepower. Not the most powerful, however, it is the fastest notch to 60 time of any of the cars we have here. Probably helped by the fact it's got four-wheel drive, 5.6 seconds. That's fairly respectable. I have to say, top speed isn't too bad at 140 miles an hour, and it only costs 22,000 credits, which is blooming good for, well, what is the most successful rally car of all time, I believe. Next, we move on to a, another Volkswagen Golf. This is the Mark III one. This is the one with a VR6 engine. Uh, a VR6 engine is a basically it's a compact six-cylinder engine. It's not an inline six. It's, it's kind of, oh, I can never explain it. I can draw you a picture of what it is, but I couldn't put into words what it is. It's basically a compact six-cylinder engine, uh, which I think Volkswagen are one of the very few people who actually use it. It's got 172 horsepower, so it's not particularly powerful. 0 60 times 7.1 again it's not the not the best here top speed is actually fairly respectable at 141 considering this is still a d-class car however it only costs 6,000 credits which is i think really quite good value for money uh it's not the most exciting car to look at it's not the most interesting i'm going to be honest it's a little bit bland uh but for for how little it costs i think it is really rather good value for money uh, it is a little bit heavier, so this is sort of starting to get towards sort of heavy cars, £2,800. However, really, value for money-wise, that is a, it is a very, very good car. Uh, we start moving on towards some slightly more modern hot hatches. This is the Seat Leon. Uh, of all the Seats, actually, this is the one which I would have. Uh, it's the one from 2003. It's a top speed of 151, which I think is pretty damn impressive. I mean, that's not much... What is it? The, the modern Seat Leon is 160, uh, and... Yeah, in the 10 years, they've gone 9 miles an hour. 0 to 60 time with this one here, 6.9, is a little bit slower. Uh, weight is actually surprisingly the same. Um, well, that actually really did surprise me, considering the new one seems a lot bigger. It also drives a lot worse. This one's much sort of more responsive, much more precise, doesn't understeer anywhere near as much. I mean, yes, it is a little bit less powerful. Uh, to be honest, this is the one which I would have uh, over the turn. I mean, I think it's a bit better looking, in, in my opinion. And it kind of sort of sums up the problem with the modern hot hatches. There are some very good ones. The problem is they've kind of all got much bigger and much heavier. In fact, it's kind of a problem with a lot of sort of everyday cars. Uh, they've all become sort of bigger and heavier. And yes, they might be a bit faster because they have a more powerful engine, but they're just not as much fun to drive. This car is a fantastic car. It's only 10,000 credits uh, and much, much better than the sort of modern day equivalent. Move on to Renault now, and this is back to when they knew how to make proper hot hatches. Uh, again, this one... <laughs> This is kind of, I would say, the spiritual successor to the Renault 5 Turbo. It's gone back to putting the engine in the middle and power to the rear, which makes it a very fun car to drive. It's also actually gone back to the sort of the wide body kit one. Again, you can see that there's a Clio underneath, but yeah, it's, it's kind of got the wide body kit on it. Uh, where's the statistics gone? 251 horsepower is not a huge amount, considering it is from a V6. It surprised me, actually. It's not particularly powerful. However, 0 60 does only take six seconds. Again, that's one of the faster cars we've had here. Top speed is 152 miles an hour, so it's a fairly quick car, this one. Handling-wise, it's a little bit interesting. Uh, I have to say, it can be a little bit leery um, at times, and it's a little bit tricky to drive. Again, much like with the Renault 5 Turbo, uh, it can be a very twitchy car because it's, it's such a tiny wheelbase. However, it does only cost 17,000 credits, which is, again, I think, is pretty damn good value for money. Uh, because it is a, a relatively quick car. And again, this is still showing the problem is why do Renault have to make big, heavy cars? We want small, light cars that are more fun to drive. Okay, the new Clio's may be more powerful. I don't think they are, really. Uh, okay, this does lose a little bit of practicality, uh, but it is a very good car to drive. We go on to Peugeot now, and uh, Peugeot have kind of gone downhill, I'm going to be honest. I would love to have the 205 GTI so I could talk about proper like a proper proper hot hatch rather than the T16 that's a little bit fancy. Uh, the Toy 6 that we have here is uh, okay. I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this car. Um, it's it's not a particularly powerful car, 174 horsepower, but it's really quite understeery. 
Uh, it's very light comparatively to uh, the other cars of a similar age at £2,400. Uh, it's just not a huge amount of fun to drive. And if we look at the more modern ones like the 207 and the 308, they're getting bigger and heavier and uglier and in fact I think the 207 is less horsepower and much bigger weight, or much heavier sorry, and much bigger in size. Why are you doing that Peugeot? You, this, they're all going wrong. Uh, the new, is it 208? I think the 208 GTI. I would like to see in Forza. Maybe Forza 5, um, hint hint. Uh, <laughs> I, I would like to see that because I think that is a, that could be an interesting car. I like the 208. Uh, I don't know how well it is to drive, I've never driven one. Um, but I would like to see how that how that one is um, because maybe maybe Peugeot can redeem themselves with that because otherwise they've been fairly rubbish. Uh, we move on to a Honda Civic now. This is the the sort of the middle is it middle generation. Oh, I don't know. There's loads of Civics. Uh, this is another car that I really quite like. Uh, um, 212 horsepower. So it's not the most powerful car actually. I was expecting this one to have a little bit more horsepower. However, it's pretty damn quick. 0 to 60 is only 6.2 seconds. Um, that's only what is that? 0.3 of a second off the Mugen Civic. Uh, that's fairly impressive. I have to say, top speed 151. Uh, cost is only 12,000 credits, uh, which is pretty cheap for the amount of performance this thing has. I think it's a mid-ish C-class, maybe a slightly higher C-class. Uh, I can never quite decide if I like the look of this thing. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, it keeps reminding me of a Honda Jazz that's hor horrible. Um, uh, I don't know, it's a bit of a weird one this. But it is, it's a very nice car to drive this one. Uh, it's relatively light, £2,600. Uh, you can sort of just throw it around into the corners and it tends to grip fairly well. Understeer isn't really too much of a problem. So we're going to come on to the ones, the sort of the more classic, I mean there's not a huge amount of classic hot hatches, they haven't been around for that long. Uh, but of the older hot hatches, these are the two that we, the sort of our favourites we would recommend. Uh, Daniel, of course it is the Golf uh, GTI Mark II, you probably already guessed that one anyway because he loves that car. And for me it would be the 97 Civic, uh, it was probably surprised uh, a few of you. <laughs> uh, anyway, we've talked about the, the Mark II Golf quite a lot. Uh, much like, much similar to the first one really. It's not a particularly fast car uh, compared to some of these anyway. 0 to 60 time, 8.1 seconds. It's fairly respectable if you compare it to normal road cars, but compared to the cars that we have here, you know, it's a little bit slow. Top speed, 128 miles an hour. Again, fairly respectable. Uh, weight is only 2,400 pounds, which is, yeah, it makes it a nice car to drive. You can just sort of throw about it or grip. Uh, it doesn't understeer too much as Daniel completely forgets where the track is. You're absolutely useless and I can say that, you can't argue back because you're not here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a nice car to drive, it can be thrown about in the corners, you can have a bit of fun with it. Uh, and most importantly, it's only 6,000 credits, which is it's nice and cheap. I mean, it is only an E-Class car, I think it's a fairly high E-Class car. Um, but it's, a, it's just a good, fun car to drive that I think everybody will probably enjoy driving. Now, with the Civic, of all the Civics, in fact of all the hot hatches, this is probably the one I would have. Uh, at least from the ones on Forza, other cars in real life, there are slight differences. Uh, but of the ones on Forza, this is probably my favourite overall. I, I would guess the uh, the Golf is Daniel's favourite. I'm fairly sure on that one. Uh, this Civic is actually the fastest car we have here to 60. That really surprised me, 5.7 to 60. Uh, that's faster than the Mugen Civic, the Scirocco R, uh, the Seat, even faster than the Ford Focus RS, the one that's got 300 horsepower. And this has 100 and... where's it gone? 182. I've literally got a page full of statistics on these cars, I can never find the right bits at the right time. Uh, yeah, it's only got 182 horsepower. Yeah, it's the fastest car here to 60, that's quite impressive. I mean, it doesn't weigh very much, 2,400 pounds. Uh, and that kind of goes a bit to explain why it's so nice to drive. Uh, it really is a fantastic car to drive this one. It's only 9,000 credits as well. Uh, and it's kind of a bit sad when we look at some of these cars and we think how good this Civic is from 1997, I believe. And the latest Honda Civic the Mugen people can come up with isn't really that much faster than it. You know, in all that time, they haven't really gone very far. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a shame. And um, to be honest, this car is much better driving than a lot of the modern cars. Yes, the modern ones have a little bit more power, or in some cases quite a lot more power, which is probably why they are quicker around the track. But to be honest, I would rather have one of these. I'd rather have one of these cars. It's more fun to drive. Uh, it's, yeah, I, I just would. Uh, and I'm sure many of you will probably agree with me, or not agree with me, and there'll be arguments. But never mind. Uh, that is it for this episode, guys. Uh, leave in the comment section. I'll be, I'll be interested to know 
out of all of the hot hatches, which ones would you have? Now, I know there are some that we can't do on Forza, which is a real shame. 205 GTI is one that I would love to have to, uh, had to driven and talk about. Uh, of the new ones, the Citroen DS3 Racing. Uh, there is a DS3 in Forza, but it's a, not the particularly fast one. Uh, the Astra GTC as well. That's another one that is... Uh, a very interesting one, and of course the Peugeot 208 GTI uh, we would have liked to have had, but we that's all we can do. We can't really do much more if the cards aren't in Forza. However, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. In the comments section as well, uh, I'll, I'll get you commenting on lots of things. Leave any challenges that you have for us, and we will have a look through them. We will pick our favourites, and maybe they'll be in a video sometime soon. However, until next time, goodbye.